Well, oh, we are live. <laughs> Good evening. Don't tell me there's a thumbs down, Langston, already. There is. There's a thumbs down and we haven't even started yet. <laughs> oh, I love it. What a crack up. There's not one thumbs up and there's a thumbs down. Uh, unbelievable, isn't it? I don't believe it. Um, and I thought I'd pop in and have a nice friendly chat with you guys and I've immediately been given a thumbs down. So one of you five out there must be a hater. <laughs> oh, what a crack up. Oh, YouTube just honestly just cracks me up completely. Um, like I said, it's funny. I get thumbs down the second I post a video. Um, there's obviously haters that watch me and I often wonder why on earth do they watch me if they don't like my content? It cracks me up. Um, it really does. It's so funny. Mohammed says, hi, handsome. How are you? <laughs> We're just laughing, guys, the people that are just popping in because we got a thumbs down before I even started doing the, uh, the broadcast. So what a crack up that is. Uh, oh, God, it cracks me up. Oh, I love this. It's, it's just so funny. Um, so let's see who's here anyway. Let me bring up the chat. I thought I'd just pop in and have a chat with you guys. Uh, let's see. So we Langston's here. He just said good timing. Um, how is there a thumbs down sign for voice? Who are these people? I know it's a crack up, isn't it? Um, Basim saying hello. Uh, Mohammed is also well. He's calling me handsome. Mm. <laughs> um, thumbs up, folks. Langston said. Elliot said hi. Martin says hey, David. Thumbs up twice. Thank you, Martin. Barry said afternoon, David. I'm having a not having not a real coffee. Are you having a beer or something, Barry? Langston says, um, it was from someone going to bed. <laughs> now there's two thumbs down. You guys, are you playing with me or what? Um, what else? James says, hello from Phoenix. Jacob said, hi from the Netherlands. Mark Frost says, hello. Um, so I really haven't got much to talk to you about. I just thought I'd pop in, answer any questions that you guys have. Um, things like that. If you want to know anything that's going around, I'll show you an interesting comment that Dion just shared in the uh, photography videography school as well, which is an interesting comment. Michael's here as well. G'day, Michael. Um, Bam is in the house, he said, um, as well. Now, I want to show you, let me just open up uh, this photography videography school, because I'd love to read this thing out that Dion was talking about, which was an interesting comment. Um, so let me open that up. Photography Videography School. Uh, had a question there. Elliot says, hey, David, I was wondering if you shoot video and photos at the same time. Yes, I certainly do, Elliot. I do it all the time. Um, I have one camera on a gimbal and I have one camera handheld. Uh, my cameras are out there, actually. So what I do is I usually use a light gimbal, so it would be something like the Mosa Aircross um, or something like that. I've got a few gimbals. Uh, and then I'll have um, one camera on that, and in the other hand I'm using, uh, say, usually the A9, uh, and I'm firing actually at the same time. It's quite funny. Um, I did have examples of that. Let me just quickly see if I can find it for you, uh, and I'll show you some examples, because I have got some. Um, I think it's actually on another drive. Let me see if I can find it. Because if I can find it, uh, you'll see exactly how uh, I work. So let me just bring this over here for a minute. Um, now let me open up this and I'll see if I can drag it across. So this is a typical one of me obviously shooting the, the video. So this is where I'm only just doing um, obviously handheld. Now here I've got an A6, this would probably be the A6400 that I'm showing. Now you're not seeing me doing both methods here though. Uh, I'll open up another couple that you'll see uh, in a minute where I'll start to use both I would say. So you can see here, uh, if we look down, now it's hard to see but, because oh, I don't think you can zoom in. Oh you can actually. And then let me move this, oh, what's that done? How do you move it on this? Uh, I might have to just grab this over here. Now you can see here that what I've got, I've got a camera in one hand 
and I'm actually I've just checked it uh, and I'm holding the gimbal with the other hand over here oh you can't oh hang on let me bring it back gimbal I don't know why uh, it's not working why is that I wonder let me drag it over here and see oh there we go all right let me try here there we go. All right, so on this one here, you can see that I've got my camera down here. So that, that's the A9 I think I've got there, and I've got an A6400. So sometimes I'm using the A6400 on a gimbal. That's on the Moser Aircross. Um, so I'm doing that for there. Uh, now I'll open up a couple of others and just show you. Uh, this was another one, just so that you can see. Why does it keep going onto that monitor? Yeah, it goes blank on that one, a bit weird. Uh, let me just see if I can reduce this down. So you can see here that this is just doing video itself. Um, I've probably got a camera down on the table or something like that. Uh, I'll open up another one so you see me in the church here. Uh, let me reduce this down in size. So you can see me over, over there. I've got a gimbal in one hand through here, and I'm holding the camera in the other hand. I'll see if I can enlarge that up and then move it over for you guys. So you can see that I'm doing it there. So I've got a gimbal in one hand, and I'm holding the camera in the other hand. If I need to put that down really quickly, I just stick it on my belt. So I've got a spider holster belt, and I just uh, stick the camera in there so then I can just do video alone. Uh, I'll bring up another one. Uh, so you can see here, if we look at this one, that I'm showing, um, you can see my belt actually there, if you look down what I've got on, so I can put the cameras on either side. Uh, I've got uh, the gimbal there, and I, in the other hand here, I'm just also shooting stills at the same time. Uh, I might have one where you can sort of see me doing both. Yeah, you can sort of see it there. I mean, it's quite funny to see. Uh, you can see there that I'm... I'm I've got the gimbal on at the same time as well as shooting. So it must look hilarious when I'm doing it, um, but it's certainly a system that works. Now, not many people can do this. Look, you'd want to make sure that you are competent in what you're doing uh, when you're doing this. Now, I did have other people, because I was doing full videography and stills here, uh, I had assistants at the back that were shooting video from the back of the church because it's got a raised area above the back and I had a uh, 70 to 200 on the lens at the back uh, that was also shooting as well. So I am covered if I can't get this as well. So I'm not doing the whole lot on my own, but I could uh, do the whole lot on my own. Uh, but you can see here that luckily the Sony cameras are able to be held with one hand and you can um, obviously hold the other one on the, on the uh, gimbal and shoot at the same time, which works out really good. And, and I've got it now down to a fine art. Again, you can see here where I've got one camera, I'm shooting the stills, and I've just got the, ga the gimbal in the other hand. Um, let me go to the last couple just so I can show you. Again, you can see here, same thing. Um, one hand, I'm shooting both here at the same time. Um, so, I mean, like I said, it probably does look funny for people that are looking at it that, you know, you've got this guy that's walking down with two cameras uh, in his hand. <laughs> working all at the same time but you know it's um it certainly gets I get it done and I, and you know what I'm pretty happy now with the results uh, that I'm getting uh, and it's something that you could all do it just takes practice and you know a bit of guts to have a go at it um, so there you go so let me just pop back to the questions uh, Langston said we lost the fee but I brought it back um, hi David, uh, you think Sony is losing the race for hybrids video pack models? Well, they are at the moment, that's for sure. Um, but the only thing is I couldn't shoot the way that I do if I was shooting manual focus because uh, the issue for me is that remember that I haven't got the time to do what I do and manually focus the cameras. So they, they probably, they may be losing it at the moment if you're talking about 4K 60 and, and high bit rates, but they still certainly have the focus uh, nailed down, which helps me. That's why I'm hanging out for a Sony to release another camera. Um, because for what I do, there's no way I can be shooting stills and then trying to focus the camera in the other hand. It's, it's not possible. Um, so I really do need to be using uh, the focusing that Sony gives me to give me that ability to shoot hybrid weddings at the same time. Um, 
Langston said we lost the feed. Yeah, I should have brought that back. Um, let's see. Patiently waits for the delay to take effect. The lens cap on. I love it. Pitch black. I totally see. Um, good one. Where are we? David, and you shoot all in standard. Yes, I do. Uh, because I'm shooting with the A9 uh, and the A7 III usually, I shoot standard everything. Um, I have shot a lot of HLG at the moment, but only sort of to try and do it. Uh, the video that you just saw the other day, I don't know whether you watched it or not, where I shot Annalise the Dancer was all shot in standard profile. And, and I honestly think the standard profile looks amazing. The only time I tend to want to shoot HLG is if I need that dynamic range. You know, if it was a sunny day and I needed to, say, have shadows sort of showing and also the uh, highlights, I may then shoot in HLG. But I wouldn't shoot log. I'd shoot HLG over any of the other profiles because you haven't got to shoot. Um, I, I just like the look of it. Uh, and I'm using Leeming LUTs um, to give me the editing for HLG. Uh, and this Leeming LUTs even gives you a, um, a LUT if you're shooting with the A9 uh, on the, um, I think it was the standard profile. Anyway, one of, the profile, one of the settings that you can use on the A9, you actually put in and then you can use Leeming LUT too to balance everything out. Um, so I do use Leeming LUT uh, to do that. But I found HLG is very easy to do. You just have to make sure that you do uh, go over. I've found about one and a half stops over tends to be the perfect sort of way to shoot uh, with that. But I still try and not clip the highlights. I'll still I often use um, the waveforms or something and not clip the highlights. But I do go over about one and a half stops usually. Um, you're doing photography and video at the same time. Yes, I am, Joe Bell Touch. Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. Should I buy the 24, Reza said, should I buy the 24 uh, 1.4? Yes, I love that lens. Absolutely love it. I used it a hell of a lot just on the weekend as well. Um, it's great. It really is great. And it's also a fantastic gimbal lens as well because it's so light and small. Uh, it's fantastic on a gimbal. Um, so yes, you should. It's great. Elliot said, you're a superhero. I wasn't expecting that. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. No, wor no worries at all. Langston said, that's why I bought the Ronin SC. Now I just need another camera. Exactly, Langston. That would work well as, uh, as well. I'd like to have a look at the uh, Moser Aircross 2, though. I'll have to see if I can get a copy of that because I really would like to have a look at that. Uh, ben worked with me uh, on a uh, wedding on the weekend. I was sort of... Um, I let him come and he didn't charge the bride and groom because he wants to learn what I'm doing. Uh, and so he worked with me on the weekend, um, but he was using my the Firetech, um, uh, the AK2000 and he loved it. Uh, so that was really good. Um, I gave him some audio gear that he could use for the day and now he's trying to build it up as well. So he's also now trying to go the way, I've, I've been mentoring Ben um, and he's got his photography down pat now, and now he's starting to try and learn the video side of things. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he comes up with. Um, wow, well, multitasking. Yeah, I know it is. It's multitasking. I must admit, look, I'm very, very tired at the end of the day, though. It's, it's not only that. Uh, it's not just the video side of things. It's the audio side of things that you have to nail. You know, you've got to make sure that you, you mic up the, the priest, that you mic up the groom that you're able to, to mic up the, uh, when you're doing the, the speeches, uh, you know, patching into the, um, the audio systems that they're using and having redundancy and everything else. So it's not just the video side of the things. I find the video side of the things is not too bad. It's more the fact that you've got to be constantly aware of making sure you've got audio because audio is such an important part you know, of the wedding. And then I'm trying to add in drone footage as well of that. And it's it's full on. And if when I do do the fusion, I don't do it every time. I mean, the last two weddings, I didn't do it. Um, but these were booked a long time ago. When I do do fusion, I'm exhausted by the end of the day. I really am. But it, it's, I love it. it it's great. Um, James said, uh, David, need help with a good flash for my Sony a7 III. Well, you, look, you can't go wrong with the Godox flashes James, I mean, uh, unless you have the money like me where I was working professionally and I bought Profoto, um, you, you're better off to go with something like the Godox systems. I mean, Profoto is expensive. I mean, I've just blown a flash tube. It's the first time I've, I think it's probably a four, five-year-old flash. And I, boy, have I used that flash. They're the D1s. Uh, I've just blown the flash tube in it and they've had to order me one, but it's $300. So 
you know, they're expensive. So I wouldn't recommend that unless you're earning a lot of money. But having said that, the Profoto B10, and Ben knows, I don't think he's watching this, but the Profoto B10 is the best light I've ever used in my life. And I absolutely adore that light due to the fact that it has the constant light that I can balance to the ambient, as well as using flash. In fact, I use probably the ambient now more than I use the flash side of things because you know I'm, I'm often doing things in low light and stuff like that and just adding a bit of uh, fill and I adore having that constant light that I can use from the Profoto B10. Um, but if you haven't got that sort of money, I just recommend one of the good um, Godox flashes like the AD200s uh, are fantastic. Uh, and there's some other ones as well, which you, know, you can get the AD400 and the 500 units. Uh, so probably start out something nice like an AD200. Um, Langston said all the extra arm, yeah. Uh, Thor said, uh, support David's awesome work, guys. Thumbs up for his video. Thank you so much. <laughs> Did I still have those thumbs down? Yeah, I've got three thumbs down now. I love it. <laughs> There's so many haters out there. God, it cracks me up. I laugh about it, but it must be hard for some young people that start on YouTube and they get these horrible people putting comments in and giving thumbs down because I know they're just haters because they give me thumbs down before the movie's even published and I laugh about it um, but it must hurt some young guys you know that are just old women that are just starting out and they get them they probably take it to heart I don't I, I, it's up to them I mean they're probably just low-life basement dwellers you know that just hate everyone and they hate anyone that has any success um, so I look at it one way, it means I'm doing well in some ways, so, um, where else were we? Hello from South Africa. G'day Kevin, good to, good to see you on here. Martin said, hey David, you should get a GoPro and strap it on. I have got, well I've got the, uh, Mosa Aircross. Um, let me show you something, let me see if I can grab it, because I've just got another thing from Small Rig, hang on. <laughs> Now, I have got, I've got the actual um, Osmo, I have even got GoPros, the, the GoPro, I think I've got two of them, but they're older ones. Um, but I just got sent this, and I'll review this properly, but I just got sent this from um, Small Rig. Let me just see if I can move my face. So this is the actual cage. Now, it doesn't come with, with this. You've got to purchase this as a separate thing, which was $4, but what it does, is you screw this, um, let me just see, let me try and see if I can work it out. I'll do it for you so I can show you. I hope I put it on the right way. <laughs> no, I haven't. Oh, it doesn't matter, I can probably turn it around here. All right, so what you do with this is the Osmo Pocket goes in here and I'm dying to try this on a shoot just to see how it goes but what it will do is you obviously have, you have your camera in here and then this little rig um, you can sit it you can sit it down low I've just got to tighten that up so it won't move uh, you can sit it down lower so it's it's sort of flat with the, the camera, but the beauty part now is that I can go around and photograph and use the Osmo Pocket at the same time as I'm doing um, stills. How cool is this little thing? Uh, so that's new from... Um, I'll put the link down in case if anyone's interested uh, in the underneath the description, because I have a small rig affiliate. I didn't pay for this, they sent it to me. Uh, always honest with you guys, like I say I am. Uh, let me just take it off and I'll show you with it off. But... It's got a couple of nice things about it that I like. Um, you can obviously screw it, screw things in the bottom. It, you can get access to the bottom here too, so if you have your audio, you can uh, still get audio through there. Uh, at least I believe you can. Uh, I haven't got the audio adapter, so I'm not sure how it works, but there's little adapters where you can plug different things into this. Um, and like I said, with that little attachment here, you can then move that to wherever you want it to go. Uh, or you could just use this if you wanted to stand up or put it onto a tripod. Uh, something like that but what a great little device and like I said now I'm gonna do um, like when it's starting to warm up now we're in spring here 
uh, once I start doing all the modeling shoots and all that sort of stuff, I can actually put this onto the camera and then film it at the same time. Uh, and you'll be able to see from the perspective of how I'm shooting. Now I can do that with the Osmo as well because I've got a, an adapter for that too. But the beauty of this is that it'll track the subject. So anyway, I thought I'd show you because what a cool thing. Small rig are unbelievable with the stuff that they uh, come out with. They really are. So I'll, I'll stick that in the link in case if anyone is interested. Uh, that'll probably give me another thumbs down. <laughs> it's, I got a four. I love it. Um, let me come back to here. Um, so I could use that, yeah, and I sometimes use the Osmo as well. Uh, I've got, like I said, something that I can attach on the top of that. Um, greetings, everyone. Um, Woody Woodman says, uh, I only use HLG and a custom profile I got off the internet. Oh, that's cool. I also use Leaming Lut. Leaming Lut is fantastic if you want to work with profiles. Um, it really does work great. They tell you how to set up your camera uh, and everything. It's, it's so detailed. It's fantastic. Um, Haas says, uh, David, I saw the Sion, uh, the Sion Lens review uh, video as well. Beautifully shot. Thank you so much, Haas. Uh, I was wondering if it was S-Log or HLG. No, it was um, only shot. That was all shot in the standard profile, Haas. I don't think people understand how good the Sony standard profile is. And you know what? Every time I post something um, on uh on YouTube, everyone always asks me what profile I used, uh, you know, whether I use log or whatever. And they're always amazed when I tell them, no, it's all shot in standard. <laughs> it really is. It's incredible what the Sony uh, cameras can do in the standard profile. It really is. Um, Langston said, uh, who else is waiting to see what Sony releases in October? Yep, hopefully something decent. I don't think... I know, look, uh, I will not be buying another A9 at this stage this year. I I'm not saying I'm not going to buy one. If, it, if the A9 II is announced, and I'm sure it's going to be amazing and brilliant, I will probably get it sometime next year. Uh, I'm reluctant to do what I did last time and pay $7,000, $8,000 for the A9 like I did, and then six months later, it's knocked $2,000 off it. Um, so I'm going to wait. Um, I'm going to, I will get it but I may wait six months before I get it. So that's just a con that is a conscious decision for me uh, for running my business. Um, I'm just not prepared to, to uh, blow that money again. Uh, I'm gonna wait for it to uh, drop down a little bit, which it always does. Uh, I'll wait for it to drop down a little bit and then I'll go in and purchase it. Because to be honest with you guys at the moment, the A9 is everything I need um, and the A7 III that I've got. I'm waiting more for a video camera. Uh, which I will get, um, but uh, the A9 I will probably get sometime next year, the A9 II. Um, Triple Zero said, uh, you just have the video uh, camera on constant record then, uh, then cut later. Can't see how you do both at the same time. Uh, well, it, no, it's not on constant record, no. What I'll be doing is I just have it on, and then I'll just press record when I need to go, and I'll just shoot away with the other hand. That's how I do it. Um, but no, I'm not constantly recording. No, I don't. I mean, I'd have that much footage. Uh, it, it wouldn't work out that way. So, you know, I'll just have it on the camera so I don't have to start it. Uh, and then I'll just press my gimbals usually will have the record button on the gimbal so I can press that. If that doesn't work, I'll just simply uh, just before I, I know I'll want to do something and that comes from experience of shooting so many weddings. I'll press record. It's no different than taking photos. You have to take that photo. It's it's just the same. So no, I don't just leave it on the whole time. No, it's 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 all separate clips. Um... Uh, Fripple saying howdy from Texas. Langston said uh, the gimbal. I'm pretty sure has a record button on the handle. Yep, certainly has Langston. You connect from the gimbal to the camera with an included cable, exactly. Uh, triples is, ah, oh, right, no, I never used a gimbal still, it's not vid, uh, stills exactly at the same time, it's more taking turns. No, it's not, I shoot exactly at the same time. Uh, as you saw on the photo, the video will be going, I'm holding a camera in the other hand, and I shoot away. Um, it's, I'm taking it exactly at the same time. Um, Langston said, no, it's both, yep, certainly is. 
Uh, you can have the gimbal wide capturing while snapping away with the stills camera. Exactly, that's uh, uh, exactly what I do. Elliot said, think about the 8K cameras coming. We'll be able to shoot only video and extract high-res pics from the video. Um, freedom for your right hand. Yeah, I probably still wouldn't do that though because look, it, look, it could help in certain scenar uh, scenarios. But remember, you do have problems with shutter speed and things like that if you're shooting with that because you're meant to just double your frame rate, which means that you're dealing with one one hundredth if you're shooting 60p. Um, and that can sometimes not be fast enough if you're dealing with moving motion. You also can't use flash. Um, so there's times where I will still be using uh, my still photography as it is. Uh, the day will come though, I suppose, where that will happen. I think if you're using a global shutter, uh, you can then use flash. So that would be interesting because you could then, in theory, be using 8K and, and use flash. I think that's correct. Um, just requires a steady hand. I have my gimbal on a strap so I can hang them when I'm about to die. <laughs> Uh, B&B says I love haters. I know, how are we going in the hater front? Anyway, we're up to three. Well, it's become one better. Um, Carl says, hello, David and friends. G'day, Carl. Uh, Langston says, I look more ridiculous, though. He has an A9. I have an Osmo pocket because my A7 III won't do 4K60. Uh, Fruple said, David, if you want to make some real money here on YouTube, test toys like the like the eight-year-old kid that makes 22 million a year i know some of those kids are absolutely incredible they really are amazing what they do um david should give a live demonstration <laughs> now i'll have to video at one time so i can show you guys uh now put on a gimbal so we can have a gimbals on gimbals i love it g'day oreo uh just what an awakening so you've just woke up out of bed um Screw Sony and the overpriced products. <laughs> I'm not going to show that. That smell goal. He's probably one of the ones that have just given me a uh, thumbs down. <laughs> oh, how can you say screw Sony and their overpriced products? They're not overpriced if you compare them to everything else. Um, three piece, your pink and blue lighting reminds me of Miami Vice. Ooh, I'd love to see you dressed like Dan jo Don Johnson in white and pink sports coat. That's funny. Um, Aria says, Ben, I'm having issues with my A7 III after the real-time IAF update. Prior to that, it was perfect. What's going on, Aria? Why is it having an issue? Uh, Nick says, I managed to hold the A7R Mark IV in my hands last night. It feels better than my A7R III and the performance. Wow, yep, I've just heard about that. But you know what? I wanted to share something because this is interesting for people particularly that are uh, wondering whether they, they should upgrade if they're doing um, Astro and stuff because... Uh, I noticed Dion shared a um, post in, uh, it was written in the Sony Alpha Melbourne, uh, but I'll show you here because it's an interesting post. Um, let me move over to here. So Dion shared this um, in the Sony Alpha Melbourne post, uh, the Melbourne site, and I shared it on the Photography and Videography School. If you haven't joined us, uh, just Type that in, Photography and the Apisan Videography School. Join us there. We're up to 5,300-odd 5, members now, so boy, it's growing fast. Um, but, but he posted this. Um, this was shared in the Sony Alpha Melbourne site, and I thought you might find it interesting. I've put in, and it said, so someone asked whether the A7 III or the A7R III would be better for Astro, but I can't find the thread. Um, so this is if you're wondering whether to go up to the A7R III if you have the A7 III. I spoke with Sony uh, Artesian uh, Stan Manitz um, as he does a lot of Astro and he said the following, Hi Dion, the A7 III is definitely about one stop better in low light, I believe, and a bit cleaner at high ISOs, but that's more in the video side. If you're doing landscape and Astro, because that's what Stan does, um, he's, he's very good in that, uh, he said, I would keep your money, man. It's, be it's the best Sony low light camera in the market, and the most all-round because of how great it is in low light for video. So in summary, the A7 III will be better for its low light performance, so stick with what you have. Uh, really interesting, isn't it? So that he's saying how good the A7 III is uh, as compared to the A7R III. So looking at that, you would expect the A7 III uh, to still probably be better in low light than the A7R III, uh, A7R IV, um, because uh, they're about the same. Uh, so it's interesting. Uh, I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, 
What else have we got? Let me just come back to here. Oh, yes, is he just woke up? Uh, the grip will be great, Nick, though. Yeah, it'll be such a nice. And obviously, the auto performance is going to be way better uh, than what you've had in the other Sony cameras. So that will be, apart from the A9, obviously. Uh, so I'm sure you're going to love that camera. Um, pink lighting reminds me of Grandma's Night. Blessed, hi, David. I would like to buy the a a Sony A6500. Is it good for both videography and photography? Uh, I wouldn't buy the A6500. Bliss, I would get the A6400, to be completely honest with you. I think that is the best bang for buck um, in the whole lot of those. Uh, look, you're better off to save the money and buy a gimbal, particularly if you're going to do video excuse me, videography, I'd be saving the money and get the A6400 um, and get a gimbal. Uh, the focus uh, is much better on the A6400 than it is on the A6500. Um, Langston says, have a little coffee and you'll be right as rain. I think he's talking to Oreo. iMelic says, hi David, what do you think about uh, the new Sony release A6600? Are you interested in that camera? No, not at all. Uh, and basically, do you think about APS-C to, uh, to videography. What do you think about APS-C to videography? Look, it's great. I mean, I use my A6400 all the time, but I still prefer the full frame look of the Sony A7 III or the A9. I still do recommend that you're better off to save the money and buy the A6400 and buy a gimbal if you're into video. But I really believe if you're gonna get the A6600, you're better off to buy an A7 III. Um, because it's they start to get close in money, particularly if you're buying decent lenses. You're better off to get the A7 III and something like the Tamron 28 to 75 lens. Uh, I think you're far better off to get that rather than um, the A6600. Uh, it's more of a sidestep. Uh, and look, the IBIS is okay. It's certainly uh, or uh, not bad for photography, but it's not very good for videography. You're better off to use a gimbal. I always use a gimbal. Uh, if I'm shooting videography with any of the Sony cameras, really. Um, Oreo said, uh, same as the A9, problems with face recognition. Boy, you've had problems, Oreo, haven't you, that I don't seem to have, and it's weird why you're having them. Um, Terry said, Sony are doing something right. Some of their lenses are out of stock in Australia with a wait for six months. Exactly, Terry. They can't produce enough of their lenses at the moment. It's showing how well everything is selling um, because they just can't make enough. Like it's still hard to get the Sony 24 mil is still on back order. The 135 mil is still hard to get. Uh, the Tamron, the, I think you can now get the 28 to 75 okay, but the 17 uh, to 28 is still hard to get as well. Uh, you know, so they obviously are doing very, very well. Um, wow, I would have thought the more Pixel A7R would have better been better than the A7 III. I use my A7R for astro stacking 10 images in a free program called Sequator and noise is gone. Thanks for sharing that, Nick. Um, Triple uh, Zero said, I still don't feel entirely comfortable buying a camera without RTT. I feel like they're do, uh, going to phase out support. What's RTT? I'm confused what that is. I must be dumb. Tell me what it is in the chat, guys, because I'm not sure. A7, uh, with that RTT is probably around the corner with RTT. Um, hi, David. Your thoughts about using the GM135? It works fantastic. Uh, really good, as long as you've got the, the range to stand back. Remember, you, the, you do have to stand a hell of a way back to use the 135. So if you're using the A6500, if you take the crop factor into that, you know, it's over 200 mil, I think. So you're going to have to be a long way from the subject if you want to shoot full body. Um, the 135 is great, though, because you can shoot very, very close with it, but it works great on the uh, A6500. Um, Mark said, can anyone tell me the difference between the A6400 and the A6100? Uh, well, I believe there's a few things. Uh, I don't, uh, from memory... Uh, you, I don't think you get 50 megabits instead of 100 megabits in the video, for starters. Um, I'm trying to think of what else was different about it. The body is not weather sealed is another major thing about that. So it's, it, there's no weather sealing at all. So that's a consideration as well. I did put a whole list out early on about what the differences were, but the differences were quite substantial. But uh, when I say that, the A6100, if you want to get an entry-level camera, is a fantastic camera. It really is. You've got the same focusing, I believe, 
as the other cameras. It was more those things that were left out. It has the flash still in it though, which the A6400 does. It's the A6600 doesn't have that. Uh, but I believe it's more things like the weather ceiling is not there. Um, and I think, it, I did read somewhere that it's only 50 megabits uh, in the video side, uh, not 100. And I, I don't think it has the video I ought to focus, but I could be wrong. Someone in the chat that is up to date on that, maybe I'll let us know that's in the live chat. Um, David, stop talking for a couple of minutes so I can go to the bathroom. <laughs> Martin said, have you used the A7S III for daylight photography and the IQ good? I used to have the A7S II, but I sold it. So yes, I did. Uh, but look, I, I, the focus just wasn't there. It, I, I, I would prefer an A7 III. It's way better. Um, and also it's a 12 megabit, uh, megapixel camera. So that's another issue as well. Real-time tracking. So it doesn't have that. Oh, so it doesn't have real-time tracking on that. Oh, okay. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, Dasim says, hi, uh, David, what kind of lenses uh, you expect from Sony in the future? Well, I'm still, I can tell you what, I'm waiting for Sony. I'm still waiting on them doing a very wide angle lens. Like I'd love something around that 12 millimeter. Um, I think that would be fantastic if they could bring out, say, a 12 millimeter 2.8. Auto focusing lens would be fantastic. Uh, you know, even a 14 mil, but I'd love something like a 10, 12 millimeter, something like that. That's what I want. I have enough lenses now that I'm happy, apart from this wide angle lens that they I haven't got. That's really the only lens that I, I need because I'm not a sports shooter. So I don't need these long lenses that they bring out. Uh, they, they, I suppose a lot of people are still waiting for the 100 mil um, that was gonna come out or was it the 105, I can't remember. Um, but there's rumors coming out that that's going to be released. Uh, that'll be probably the 1.4. Um, that, that could be a nice lens. When I shot with a 105 Sigma, you could stand noticeably closer to the subject than you could with a 135. So I did really love shooting the 105 for that. So that could also be a lens that people would, uh, would buy. But I wouldn't buy that because I'd just stick with the 135. Um, so for me, personally, the only thing I'm looking for now is a wide angle, uh, a native wide angle. So... Um, but when, when we say in the future too, I think they'll update lenses as well. Like the 70 to 200 uh, f2.8 could be updated. The 2470 uh, could be updated. Um, remember, they're, they're, look, they're still great lenses, but they're like Nikon and Canon where they'll bring out version 2 or version 3 eventually of those lenses. So uh, those lenses could definitely uh, be updated and I could see a Mark II version of the 70 to 200 or the 2470. Um, you know, and I think that probably will happen over time. I'm not sure when, but I think it will happen. Um, the uh, 85 1.4 could also do with an update because that could use the linear motors that they have in the 135. Uh, because the 85 1.4 is a it is a slow focusing lens, unfortunately. Um, so that could certainly do with an update. The the Sony 85 1.8 is much faster focusing uh, than the uh, 85 1.4. Uh, so they probably could do an update with that and put the new linear focus motors in there. Big difference. Once you've used the Sony 135, that is unbelievably fast, that lens. It, uh, it's dead silent, the autofocus, incredibly fast. If that was put in the 85, 1.4, or you never know, 1.2, that would be a killer. Um, remember too, they did talk about releasing a fast lens as well, like a 1.2. So we're still waiting to see what that could be. A6100 has no IBIS. Yeah, well, neither does the A6400 either. Um, Jerry said the A6400 works well with the new 200 to 300. It gives you a lot of reach. Yeah, it certainly would, Jerry. Uh, that's for sure. Um, which is better, the 85 1.4 Sony GM or the Samyang? I haven't used the Samyang yet. Um, so I can't tell you. Uh, I've heard nothing but good reports about the Samyang though, um, but I'd have to test that to tell you because it's the thing for me too is video autofocus is very important and the Sonys do always tend to have very, very good video autofocus. Uh, so that would be something that I'd have to test, but we may have someone in the live chat that's used both of those lenses. Sharpness wise, 
Uh, I think the Samyang is brilliant. It, it's it's great. I'm just not sure how the autofocus is. Uh, there are some reviews on YouTube though that will sort of discuss that. Uh, I think Dustin Abbott did a review on that. Is it Dustin Abbott? Uh, 200 to 600, you were saying typo. Um, Elliot says, every night before I go to sleep, I say good night to my A7 III. <laughs> Am I normal? I love it. Uh, Langston said, uh, let's just say this is a judgment-free zone. Um, Triple says, uh, real-time tracking, so it doesn't have that. Someone at the door. It's probably Kerry. Uh, just talk amongst yourselves, guys. I'll be back in two seconds. Well, I've got no idea what this is. Do you want me to unbox it? Tell me in the live chat now. If you want me to unbox it, I'll do it because I've got no idea what it is. Uh... So what was the RTT again? I'm not sure what that was. Oh, real-time tracking, okay. <laughs> the acronym, sometimes I get lost and can't think about what it is. Um... So MX says, thanks for answering my previous question. I actually have a A6400. My second question is, what gimbal you recommend for that camera with some rig cage, etc.? cetera? Um, I love the Moser Aircross. Now there's a new Aircross that's out um, now, and I'd love to try that because I believe, I think from what I've seen, that will be a really good um, uh, gimbal. Um, the Rowan SC that Langston has, I mean, he loves that as well. I haven't used that gimbal though. Uh, the gimbals that I have, are, uh, I've got a few of them. I have the AK2000. I don't mind that. I'm wondering why you're having issues. That's interesting. I haven't got any issues with that at all. Um, but my favorite is the Moser Air 2. That, that is my favorite because that's a massive gimbal. If you want to look at that, check my last video because I showed how I used that with the A7 III, uh, I think it was, that I put on that. Um, so check that out and you'll see how that, that is fully made up. But if I'm traveling with something like an A6400, I would use my Moser Aircross. Now, the Moser Aircross is a nice light gimbal, I love it. But there's a new version out, the Moser Aircross 2, which I haven't used yet. So I would say, see if you can have a look at that. Uh, the Rowan um, RS is, is, it seems to be pretty good as well. But I, would, I just like the Moser stuff, so I would probably get the Moser Air 2. Uh, sorry, the Moser Aircross 2. It's just come out. Um, Brandon says, why can't Sony add real-time tracking for the a7 III? I've got a feeling, Brandon, that it, it may be the processor can't handle it. It's either that or it's Sony just saying that they want you to buy another uh, camera. We don't, we don't know. Um, um, needed a video camera change grips. I'm um, not sure what that was about. I think David was kidnapped by Australian alien. <laughs> uh, you guys were talking as I've been going on. Uh, do you think we'll see another firmware update for the A7 III line of cameras for all the new features? No, I don't think. Look, you might see minor ones, but I don't think you'll see much now for the A7 III. Um, probably next year we'll get an A7 IV. Um, so I don't think now we'll get much. I mean, we're still waiting for the A9 update. That should be coming soon, we hope. Uh, 105, yeah, the other lens Sony should bring out. Well, they will probably bring that out, Mark, because there was rumours about that patented. So it is another FedEx delivery, Michael. I don't know what it is. Open it. All right, here we go. I've got to find some scissors. Hang on. I've got no idea what it is.
Let's do it. Ooh. Boy, did they uh, tape this thing down there. <laughs> it's, got, <laughs> it's got tape all over it. How the hell do you open this thing up? They certainly haven't mucked around with the tape side of things, that's for sure. Let's see if I can get in there. This is probably the best. <laughs> is this suspense killing you? Here we go. I'm nearly there. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a crack out. I hope I'm not damaging anything. Oh, no, here we go. It's probably going to be nothing exciting. I don't know what it is. Oh, now there's more stuff in here. So it's rigetti. Okay, I don't know what this is. All right, let me open this up and we'll see. Oh, yeah, I know what this is. Yeah, I someone asked me if I'd be willing to have a look at this. It, it's a, um, it's actually the uh, L plate. I think it's for the A9 and the A7 III. Uh, this is a new one and I really wanted to have a look at it. Normally, like I said, I've been going with small rig, um, but they asked me if I'd have a look at this and, and apparently this is done from one, it's made from one solid piece of aluminium, um, has a battery, uh, sorry, it has a magnet on the back that you can tie this in, but it's interesting because it has all stuff that's, uh, you can t see it has like the ruler on the side, but it has levels uh, built into this on both sides. So it's got a level here. Ooh, it's got a level here and also on that side. Um, so yeah, I said, yeah, look, send it to me. I'll have a look at it. It's really nice. That looks beautiful, actually. Um, I do love it because I use Arca Swiss. Uh, I love to have L plates on because I can just slide it in uh, straight away. And it also looks like you have got areas where you can put other things into as well. So that's what that is. Cool. I'll have a look at it when I do a review. So that's what that is. That is really nice. That's beautiful, actually. Wow. Interesting. The only thing I'm not sure about, though, is how you get the battery out. Let me grab my A9. I'm just curious to see what it's like. Oh, yes, I see. Yeah, it goes on that side there. Yeah, so you do get access to the battery on that side. I'll put it on so you can have a look. Oh, that's nice. So like I said, it comes with that coin thing there. Um, it has a lip on the front, which is nice. I have to review it for them because I said I would, but it has a lip on the front here which sits against the camera so it holds it in. And then you've got, like I said, these levels which are at the back. Uh, you've got one here and it goes to the front and also one over that side as well. How cool is that? That is really good. That is amazing. That is so good. They're not cheap though, I think they're about $80 uh, US. So they're not cheap, but it, it is quite beautiful, isn't it? I mean, that, that really is that really is nice. So these are a new one out, I believe. So uh, I'm not sure whether you can even get them at the moment. I, I, well, you probably can. I'll have to find out more detail about it, but I'll do a review, but that looks beautiful. I love that, that fits amazingly well. Wow. Love gadgets. 
If you're interested in it, it is from Rigetti. Hi, Kerry. Come and say hello in the chat. Oh, Kerry's hiding. <laughs> hi. So that's Rigetti. She's saying hi, but she doesn't want to show her face. <laughs> Oh, where am I? I'm looking at there. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thanks, Kes. She just made me a coffee. Uh, let me come back to here. We love surprises. People have said most secure L bracket. I know it is Langston. I agree. It is the most secure L bracket in history. Uh, it says fragile. It must be from Italy. It could be a bowling alley. Good morning from England. G'day, Gilbert. Good to see you here. Um, Bliss Pitcher says, thank you, David. Can you please recommend me a good lens I can use for the A6400 for both videography and photography? I love the 16mm. That's what I love personally, though. That's what I'm using now. Uh, it's the Sigma uh, 16mm uh, I adore. Fantastic. Um, it's really good. Um, that looks good. I oh, know. How cool is that, Gilbert? I love that. I don't really usually get carried away with L brackets, but this thing is seriously cool. Uh, like When I first saw it, I thought, oh, look, I don't need another L bracket because I've got a few from um, a small rig. Uh, but when I looked at it and I saw how it was made, I thought, wow, it, it really looks like it's a beautiful piece of machinery or, or you know, a, a tool. And I love the way it had the levels built into it. That's one thing I think is fantastic to have that three different levels that you can see from all angles, uh, including the, uh, the little ruler there. But that is really smart, really smart. I love that. That's beautiful. Like I said, it's all aluminium. Um, Really nice. And you can see there where it's got the lip uh, coming through here. Um, if I can find it, I'll stick the link down below. Uh, someone asked if I'm getting a new iPhone. No, I'm not. I don't think so. I I've got the um, MX, the, the last version. But I think the only difference looking at it is that it's going to have three cameras. Uh, and you know what? I have got every single iPhone that has ever been released. Uh, someone said this bracket uh, doesn't extend the grip. Though. No, it doesn't. No, no, that doesn't area. But it does, uh, like I'm often using things on um, video, like I said, video, and I'm using Arca Swiss for everything I've got though, and that's why I love stuff that is Arca Swiss like this though. So this is really gonna aid me. So I leave these on. Um, and then I can just slide them straight into the attachment that's, that's on there. It's more the fit and everything though, Oreo. Like, you, I mean, you guys probably can't see how well that this thing is made. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. It really is, and it feels stunning. Um, I'm not just saying that because they send it me for nothing. I'll tell you the truth. It actually does. It feels really beautiful. And the way it fits the camera uh, really is, is gorgeous. Uh, I really like that. Really like it. Yeah, particularly in the levels. Like I said, I can stick that then on and I can make sure it's level uh, without even having to look at the levels on the uh, on the tripods and stuff. So, um, yeah, thanks for Greddy. I, 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 like I said, I normally don't really think about the L brackets. Even the top, the way it fits into the top part of the grip there is is that is perfectly flush. Um, perfectly flush. The front part there blends in really nicely as well. Um, that, like I said, that bottom part that folds over, the back part fits beautiful as well. Like it really is made, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's really nice. But you can't extend it, yeah. You can't even take that off. Like I know with the small rig ones, you can take this off, so you can have it with a handle on and things like that, which I do like using as well. Um, but I think if you're just doing, um, if you just want an L bracket and you're not wanting that external handle, this is fantastic. Um, yeah, anyway, I'll let you know because I'll review it fully. Um, so the iPhone, yeah, so I think with it, I, I like I said, I've had every iPhone since day one, and I've, I, the funny thing was I got the first one in Australia, believe it or not, or one of the first in Australia, because I camped out the whole night. I went there at, uh, I think I was there at six o'clock when the shop was shutting the day before. I slept in my car out the front, um, because I'm the biggest geek known to mankind, 
and I stayed there the whole night in my car and then I was up when they came back in the morning. So, <laughs> and then I got one of the first iPhones uh, ever made in Australia and um, or in the world really because we always usually get it before you guys in the US and everything because of the, the time uh, difference. Um, and I've got an iPhone every single year. I usually have camped out each, each year. Uh, last year I just ordered online because it, it seems now that it's not such a big deal anymore. You don't have to camp out like you used to. But I'll have to wait and see what they say when the announcement comes out. But the announcement from what I've seen so far from the rumours, it doesn't really excite me that much this time. And I think I may just keep this for another 12 months. Uh, and upgrade next year that they're not putting 5G in it. It looks like it's just going to have an extra camera, which is a wider camera, I think. Um, but yeah, I don't think I'll bother. What do most of you think? Do you think you might go and get a new one or uh, you're all going to get the new iPhone? Or it doesn't interest you that much? So do we have any other questions, guys? Um, otherwise, I'll uh, head off. Three cameras, yeah, I mean, look, I think it'll probably be better. It's obviously going to be better. I just don't know if I can justify another $2,000 for for just a slightly wider camera. I, th I think looking at it, it looks like it's almost an S version of, of the iPhone. So it's not really it's not really a big deal, I, I don't think, compared to what I've already got because I do like this phone. So like I said, I think I may keep it for another 12 months and then decide what to do. Uh, I might get the next one that comes out because that's probably going to be 5G and it's probably going to be a much bigger step. So I think for the first time ever, I may not upgrade my iPhone. Um, Robert says um, that L series bracket quick release plate with built-in level bars for A73 is it's A9 is $89. There you go. Yep, uh, and that's the one. That's the one, uh, Robert. Um, like I said, it's, uh, it, well, I think it, it'd it be dearer than the uh, small rig ones. It, it does look really beautifully made, though. But like I said, it, it doesn't have that way of putting in a handle, which I can use like the small rig ones. Um, I have the iPhone XS, definitely not upgrading. Yeah, I think a few people may feel like that, right? Fripple says, I'm still super happy with my XR. Yep, me too. Uh, I'm not into phones. I have the Motorola G7 power. Now his uh, charge lasts for five to six days, so I'm going to stick with it forever. That sounds fantastic. Raymond says 2020 is supposed to be the redesign year. That's why I think I might wait, Raymond. I just don't think I can justify another $2,000 for something that's only going to be a little bit better. I have thought about getting um, one of the attachment, the lenses that go on it, though, for a wide angle. Um, because sometimes if I stick my iPhone on a gimbal, uh, I would like a slightly wider aspect. So I may keep this and just buy one of the lens adapters, you know, that you stick over it. I think they're monument ones or something, aren't they? The really good ones. So I may get something like that and uh, do that. So, um, yeah, I just don't think, I I just don't think I'll I'll be upgrading it. But I'll wait and see. It's it's tomorrow, isn't it, that the announcement's going to be made? Um, Gilbert says, I'm sticking to my Motorola G5. It cost me 160 um, pounds and it does everything I need. Well, there you go, Gilbert. Fantastic. Fripple says, not interested in 5G. Alexander says, depends if they have some computer, computational advantages to the photography for me and better low light. I'm sure the camera will be slightly better. You would think it would have to be. Uh, but no 5G is a bit of a deal breaker for me. Um, John says, I'd rather buy a new lens than another phone. Yeah, I mean, you can buy them on a plan, but it's still something you've got to pay off for the next 12 months. Like I said, from the rumours that I've been hearing, there's nothing been where it's really excited me, where I've thought, wow, you know, I've got to get it this year, but I might change my mind totally when I see the release tomorrow. Um, but I don't think so. I've, I've already got the iOS 13 on this, and I love it. It works fantastic. There's nothing can really push them as it is. Um, Software-wise, I mean. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure that I'll upgrade this time. It's got the A12 chip. They say the, the A13 or whatever it's going to be is only going to be a small step up anyway. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, now, if you haven't watched my previous video, go and check that out because I actually do a breakdown of how I did that dancer video. So, if you're interested in how I went about shooting that, check out the last video that I just posted before this one. 
because it will take you through the whole thing. I show the gear that I used, I show the shots that were sort of created from that gear. Um, so if you are interested in anything like that, make sure you check out the last video I did using those sign lenses, uh, because you might find it interesting. It's a bit of an educational uh, thing, because I talk about how I use gimbals, I talk about how I use the tripod, what attachments I used. I also talk about things like what monitors I used on, on the tripod and also the gimbal, uh, things like that, that, you know, and how I focused. Uh, so it should be, you know, interesting if you're uh, into videography at all. Um, <laughs> Apple are overpriced themselves. Well, they are getting very expensive, Gilbert, that's for sure. Uh, but I think even the Sam Samsung ones are about the same price now, the ultimate ones that you get, the high-end ones. So I think they're all around the same price. I had some old ones. Where'd I put them? Uh, I've got it somewhere. I'd love to show you. Ugh, I wonder where they've gone. I'll have to find it for you because I've got the original uh, iPhone and also one of the early um, handheld ones. You will laugh if you can have a look at it. I don't know where they've been because I've cleaned up the office. We've changed the whole office around and um, I'm not sure where it is. I'll see if I can find it for you. Um, about the Sony Xperia phones. Uh, we Sony have stopped selling here three-piece. We can't get them now in Australia. They're not selling to Australia at all, those uh, Xperia phones. Harry says, love from old Harry here as well. I have to go to bed, catch you next time. No worries, Harry. Um, hello, David from the Ukraine. G'day. Langston says, heck, even the Google Pixel has some crazy price. Exactly, they're all expensive now as well. Um, David, I think it's pronounced Sinai. Yeah, it is, and I keep forgetting. I always say sign. <laughs> Aaron contacted me yesterday and he said, well, I think he actually said that. He sent me a message because I put that video up. Uh, what did he say? Yeah, it's Sinai. Yeah, so it is pronounced actually Sinai. And I always say sign. I don't know why, um, but it is Sinai. Thanks for that, Alexander. I keep forgetting it, um, but it is Sinai. I'll have to try and remember that. Um, yep, I have my original silver black iPhone. Yep, I've got that here somewhere. and I, I'm not sure if it's the first one, but it's, it's the one with the round back. I'll have to see if I can find it and show you in another live. Don't forget, uh, two guys, tomorrow I will be on live with Aaron around about 9.30 my time. I think it's 8 p.m. New York uh, time. So uh, we will be live talking about general photography stuff. It's not the Sony sort of show. That's my Friday, Thursday US time. Uh, but I will be live with Aaron in the morning. Uh, so we'll be doing that, just talking about current news stories and things like that. So that will be on. Uh, so stay tuned for that. So are there any last questions before we call it a day? I just really wanted to have a chat with the Europeans and, and everyone else that normally can't uh, get live um, because I thought, you know, it's nice to have a chat with all of you guys as well. Love it if you could give me a thumbs up too, guys. Um, that would be fantastic because it just, you know, lets people see that uh, I'm here. Um, do you think the uh, price of a used A9 will be, uh, well, it will drop. The, the A9 will drop in price once the A9 II is announced and released. I mean, the A7 III has dropped quite drastically. So the, it will happen with the A9 as well. Um, depending on what price that is, you, you may get a really good one at a really good price. I mean, I'm even thinking about getting an A7R III uh, because... The, you know, they're getting a really good price now. And I don't need 60 megapixels. I'd be happy with the 40 odd. Um, so I am also keeping an eye out for the A7 III prices as well. Because if they drop to a reasonable price, I might get an A7 III as a backup camera. Um, or, you know, if the A9s drop to really good prices, I may get another A9 as well. But I think the A9s will hold their value for a little bit. Uh, the, the new A9 II is gonna be expensive. It'll be like the A7 III is going to be an expensive camera, but the A9 will be their ultimate camera. It will be their marquee model. So you're going to have to pay for it. That's why I'm saying I'm going to wait for the A9 for six months or so to see if it drops because I'm just not prepared to pay that $7,000 and now you can get them for four. I know it's been out for a while, but it did drop 
within six months quite a bit of money. Uh, so I'm going to wait. I've already got an A9, so I'm already blessed anyway. Uh, but I think I'll hold out for six months or so and then pick it up at a bit more of a reasonable price. Uh, it might be a fraction longer than that, but I'm willing to wait because I've already got an A9 and an A7 III, so I'm not in any hurry. Um, I'm sure it'll kill me if it's an amazing release, but I'm going to hold out. Um, short for cinema. Yep, so it's Sinai. Cinema. I'll, I'll probably forget again, Alexander. <laughs> I'll be still calling it sign. Sin. I've just got to remember sin. Sinny. Sinny. That's what it is. Um, and that's about it. So apart from that, guys... Um, I'll see you all tomorrow. Hopefully you'll join, uh, join in tomorrow for Aaron and myself uh, for the live chat that we go through. Uh, so that will be it. Um, John has just said, last price I saw for a Sony A9 is about 3,500. I know, how, how good is that price now? Uh, it's incredible now. That, that is an amazing camera at that price. You know, like I'm saying, even if the A9 II is incredible, you're going to probably pay $2,000 extra for it or something. It's, it's going to be way above what you'll buy an A9 for now. So the A9 is still going to be a, an amazing camera for many years to come. And that's why I'm saying if, if you want an A9 uh, and you've only got that sort of money, you'd be better off to get the A9 than try and stretch yourself or go into debt to get the A9 too. Because the A9 is still going to be an amazing camera. It's still the best camera I've ever used. So... Cine. Uh Yep, they're saying, Scott's saying. Um, that's it. All right, guys. Uh, heading in. Uh, thanks so much for the chat. Really uh, it was fun. Uh, apart from that, I may see you all tomorrow. Um, thanks, everyone. Catch you later. Bye.